so we're here at the Lenora Connect and uh, who are you? I'm Andrea Gallo, I'm VP of, for the strategic initiatives and segment groups. Uh, so uh, what's the latest? The latest is we are announcing the machine intelligence uh, initiative and as part of this uh, ARM is making a major step in uh, donating the ARM and SDK as an open source project. So this is machine learning uh, coming into the Linaro now? Yes. Um, machine learning is, is really recent. Machine learning and especially deep learning for the masses is really recent. Uh, neural networks started in the early 70s, 80s, and then somehow it was less of a hype. But 2015, 2015 is the year of the very first commit to the TensorFlow project from engineers at Google. Yeah, they were working first on the uh, project Disbelief. Uh, and then it turned out into uh, the first commit to TensorFlow. That was in 2015, midnight, something late night. Uh, 2015 is the year of the first commit to CAFE2, uh, another very important machine learning framework endorsed by Facebook and the Berkeley AI Research Lab. 2015 again. 2015 is the year of the first commit to MXNet by endorsed by Amazon, Carnegie Mellon University and other universities in the world. So 2015 is a very important year. This is because the compute capabilities in the CPU and GPU reached uh, a level of performance that allowed to run all the training and the inference in the data centers, which was not possible before. And also this is thanks to the cloud. Every time we upload our images to the social networks, uh, the public images, the public postings, these go through inference, these go through uh, detecting faces, smiles, objects and automatic tagging. But this means also that we are providing a huge database of billions of images that all the cloud vendors and the social network vendors can use to train and improve the accuracy of their algorithms. So this is the cloud. There are constraints that come with uh, deep learning on the cloud in the data center. You need to be always on, always connected to the internet. Um, there may be constraints in terms of bandwidth and traffic because you need to upload your images to the cloud to get it uh, analyzed. Uh, there may be constraints in uh, time, in uh, latency. There may be real-time uh, constraints in uh, in a production line, in industrial use case, for example, in detecting a liquid spill or in any other um, analysis of, of some data capture from the sensors. There may be privacy concerns, there may be uh, sensible data that you don't want to upload to the cloud. So this is where edge computing come, comes in the picture. Uh, and basically edge computing means deploying computing workloads and deploying machine learning, deep learning algorithms at the edge. So in uh, micro data centers or powerful edge nodes that are right there, close to where the data is captured from the sensors. And this is possible because all the modern application processors, those that we, we have in our uh, smartphones, they all have nowadays uh, neural network processing capabilities. This can be um, heterogeneous computing using the CPU, the GPU, the DSP, some special instructions or Mac uh, units, or it can be complete offload, um, offload processing engines. This is what we refer to as machine learning processor, neural processing unit, uh, deep learning accelerator, so DLA, NPU, all these acronyms are somewhat, somewhat similar. Now the point is that on one side you have the frameworks, TensorFlow, CAFE2, MXNet, PyTorch, uh, Paddle Paddle and the other Chinese frameworks. And on the other side you have all these companies that provide neural network accelerator IPs. Uh, I could easily count a hundred of companies providing NN processing IPs once in one sort or another. And so they need and this is the, the, the problem that uh, Linaro we're very familiar with. You need to integrate uh, accelerators 
with open source, with complex frameworks, yet you should avoid forking and fragmentation. And today this is what is happening. With 100 companies providing neural network IPs, is you start by downloading the runtime from a given framework um, and you modify it to add the, the hooks, the calls to your driver. Well, this is a fork. And with many companies providing IPs and many very complex frameworks, every framework change is fluid. They change continuously. They are between 500,000 and 1.5 million thousand lines of code. These are pretty big and change all the time. Well, it's not scalable. It's not sustainable having hundreds of forks. So this is where at Linaro we have the skills to help and uh, have a significant impact. This is the core of, of the mission of the, the Machine Intelligence Initiative. We want to reduce the fragmentation, yet we want to ensure that all the members in the ecosystem can provide their competitive advantage. The way we are achieving this is that first we want to endorse open standards open standards for the machine learning frameworks uh, in terms of the um, format to describe the neural network, describe the weights and, and, and the, the entire deep learning uh, algorithm. And we need also to adopt open standard APIs to initiate a graph, to initiate a backend on, 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 on the device, to e start the execution, um, be notified when the inference has completed. Uh, Onyx is a very interesting candidate as an open standard. And we're seriously evaluating and considering uh, leveraging Onyx and the Onyxify API as the upper layer interface boundaries of our work. Then we want to uh, work on a common open source inference engine that is shared across uh, the ARM partners in the ecosystem, optimized for the ARM cores, yet it shall provide a framework of plugins so that every neural network accelerator can be plugged in uh, as an accelerator. The inference engine then is a is a kind of a commodity, is a shared software, and every vendor shall only focus on their own specific accelerator, their competitive advantage. So the total cost of ownership for each partner uh, providing their neural network IPs, the, the, the TCO is much lower. They only need to um, focus and continue upgrading their neural network applications, their key differentiator. And collaboratively at Linaro and all the players together, then we can collaborate in, um, in the common inference engine in maintaining it and evolving it. So uh, are there some, uh, for example, TensorFlow, Cafe, all that, is that, are those, those are one side and the, on the other side is something else and those TensorFlow, Cafe are open source also? Yes. And then the other parts are also open source, but you're like tying them in between? Or? Yes, yes, correct. Uh, we, um, as I said, uh, when you tie one of these frameworks down to an accelerator, you need a runtime engine that goes through the, uh, the graph uh, that needs to be used for the inference phase. Um, so the runtime is something that looks at the graph and translates it in a set of uh, complex mathematical um, uh, operations that are executed in, uh, in sequence. Um, and so we are tying up the frameworks and the accelerators that, that offload the CPU in a way that is not duplicated for every vendor, not 100 times 100 inference engines that do all the same but somewhat different and nobody is is able to rebase them, provide fixes, uh, new features. So we want to focus on the, yes, you said the tie-in, that, that's, that's, that's a good way of phrasing it. And so Linaro is a perfect uh, 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 entity that could be, has helped to solve this? Absolutely. This is what we have been doing for, for the last eight years, since Linaro got started. Uh, we focus in, uh, leading the collaboration in the ARM open source ecosystem. 
Uh, we run the company in a profit neutral mode. Um, all our members uh, fund our activity with um, an annual membership fee and um, engineers that we, uh, we move into shared uh, teams. Um, and we use all the fundings to hire the best talents in, in the community, uh, the best key maintainers. Uh, so also for this machine intelligence effort, uh, we would hire and we are hiring the right technical leaders and managers and ex test experts. Uh, test is very important as well. Um, and all, all our work is upstream. So uh, the way I would uh, understand uh, uh, AI is that it, it doesn't have to do with somebody, somebody having uh, kind of like a secret but the best algorithm. And if they have that, then they have an advantage. Is that true or not? No, no. The algorithms, the algorithms, come from the uh, framework vendors, uh, the f um, from the model vendors. Um, TensorFlow is a framework to develop applications, and TensorFlow has its. Uh, it's a think of an app store. TensorFlow has its store of models, models that can do image recognition, um, text recognition, uh, sound or voice or speech recognition. So these are the, the algorithms. And they can be proprietary. They can be proprietary, they can be open source. Um, TensorFlow, Cafe2 has the model zoo. MXNet has, I think the name is Gluon. Everyone has a kind of an app store or a model store. Some are open source, some are proprietary. That is where the intelligence, the, the data scientists, they develop these algorithms. Uh, at our end, we work on the execution, the translation from al algorithms into, into executable code. Machine code. Machine code. Yes. So, uh, Linaro, uh, at Linaro, you're the experts at m making the most optimal machine code. What's it called? You know, using the ARM processors. Um, Linaro is where we. It's a melting pot of experiences from all the players in, in industry. We have experts in kernel development. We have experts in uh, tool chain. We, we do work with ARM in optimizing GCC, yes. So we have teams with, uh, with a very varied set of, of skills and uh, expertise. The key DNA is always collaboration and open source. And uh, so for example, uh, TensorFlow has a TPU. Uh, ARM is doing a, a machine learning uh, uh, IP on the yes. chip and uh, some people are doing with GPU, but it yeah. doesn't matter that there's all these different hardware. And, and there are multiple companies providing other acceleration units. Um, in Asia, there's Bitman, Cambricon, there are so many. They can be it, like ASICs. Uh, or blocks that are integrated in the SOC. Uh, it really reminds me of um, the early days where um, the smartphones had the capabilities of uh, doing a video playback. Uh, in those days, everybody was having a different proprietary way of exposing the uh, MPEG-4, H.264 decoding to the upper layers, and there was a proliferation of proprietary applications. Then we started focusing on, and those drivers were kept in binary, right? Um, now we are at the stage where the drivers are fully open source. Uh, as a, to me, one of the golden reference is the uh, open source drivers for the Dragon board, the DB410 and A20, developed uh, between Qualcomm and Linaro uh, on 96 boards. Uh, that, to me, is one of the golden references. You have an entire video decoding, video encoding drivers that is fully open source and that integrates with the frameworks. So in those days, uh, it was tricky, uh, it was proprietary, now we have clearly well-defined APIs, the video for Linux uh, driver API, then integrates in the FFmpeg, and then you can go up to GStreamer, and the applications work. And every um, SOC vendor had a different set of video decoding accelerators, uh, yet now we have defined APIs. So I see a, a very similar um, situation now. Of course, complexities may be different, the use cases are different, but it's a similar dynamics. So, so uh, you, you have a role to play no matter the architecture of the accelerator. So it works Correct. with GPUs, with uh, 
with the uh, IP on the SOC, yes. it works with the uh, ASICs, yes. anything. Yes, the key is to have the right set of plugins in the framework so that the inference engine can probe and can understand which operators can be accelerated, can be offloaded, uh, and the inference engine can understand and define if uh, uh, a subset of a graph, so um, a sequence of multiple operations can be executed all at once, offloaded all at once, without doing the back and forth between the CPU and the accelerators. And then it's the, the vendor who provides the accelerator that takes care of whether you need a shared memory, you need a DMA, you need uh, uh, control registers, interrupts. That is where the plugin can, uh, uh, can abstract these. But the framework shall be aware whether it is a complete offload or a, a heterogeneous uh, computing with GPU and DSP and CPU. So all the providers of all these uh, solutions that you plug into, they all excited about you doing taking this role. And how how big is this role going to be for you, for um, Linaro? For Linaro, I think this is a key a key uh, in yet another key initiative uh, um, to help the ARM ecosystem expand uh, and to reduce fragmentation, to help members focus on their competitive advantage. We held, we held um, AI neural networks on our summit on Wednesday here in our Connect. Uh, we had amazing speakers. Uh, we had keynotes by uh, Chris Benson, uh, AI evangelist, by Jen Davis, general manager uh, for the AI division at ARM, uh, Rob Elliott, director uh, for RMNN, he gave a great deep dive into RMNN and how RMNN does exactly all these and, and copes for all the uh, acceleration. Uh, we had Pete Warden from Google, TensorFlow, uh, mobile and embedded team. He is the tech lead uh, and um, he was with us. He also shared a quote for the press release and, and uh, he's eager to collaborate with us. We also had Tom Lane from AWS AI and he gave a, a, a great talk and a demonstration of how to use uh, TVM and Onyx. So I think we are on the right path also on the technical choices. And then we had Mark Chalabois from Qualcomm, uh, Xilinx with an amazing, um, amazing talk about how to ha optimize machine learning on FPGAs. Uh, um, I hope I'm not forgetting anybody, no offense if I'm, I'm not going through the entire list, but it was a very busy day and the feedback was extremely positive. Is it possible that maybe NVIDIA thinks they will do something different? Because they, do, they want to do everything on their GPUs, right? Yes. And maybe um, they have a different strategy or it could also be compatible? I would love to work with NVIDIA as well. Uh, we, we are here to collaborate and, and uh, to be inclusive. So we would love to, to have also NVIDIA collaborate with us and share code together. Of course, uh, here is, we're focusing on deep learning inference at the edge. So it's not the big, very powerful GPUs that run on in the data center. That is the training, that is the data center. Here we are talking about edge computing, edge devices. You're not talking about data center? Uh, not for this specific work. We have other activities in the data center with high performance computing, uh, and this is where the uh, training work will naturally fit. Uh, today with this machine intelligence is really the um, deep learning inference uh, at the edge, on the edge devices. But uh, potentially you might have take, a, take up a role too in the data center for the AI. So um, at Linar we have a data center team and uh, we have a high performance computing special interest group. Um, one of the key activities they're working on is enabling the uh, Scala, uh, scalable vector extensions in the ARM V8 architecture, the SVE, uh, into our high performance computing. These can be easily used also for uh, training in the data center. So uh, the data center team is one of the segment groups uh, that, that I'm responsible for. At Linaro, we have the uh, technical steering committee led by our CTO, David Rosling. This is the place where we ensure we exploit all synergy across all the teams at Linaro.
And so your next role is uh, just more uh, reaching out, more talking with all the people and making it happen? Um, right now I'm, I'm um, covering all the segment groups and I'm uh, kick-starting this machine intelligence initiative. Um, and uh, I think at some point we will have some full-time senior manager or director that will, uh, will own it and uh, at some point this will grow and I will need help. All right. So, uh, so uh, potentially there will be uh, uh, openings, or maybe somebody at Linaro wants to do this, right? Potentially, yes. Yeah. Right.